Well, we've just dropped onto the dirt just northeast of Lakeland in far north Queensland. And our aim is to follow an old droving trail where they used to muster cattle from Laura all the way down to Cairns. Now, this is a gazetted road, believe it or not, but it's not actually surveyed, so we don't exactly know where it is on the map. So your guess is as good as mine. We're gonna sort of follow our nose, try and find this track and open it up and be one of the first to actually drive this track in about 15 years. We know a local who's opened a lot of the track up. That was about six years ago. and There's been a lot of cyclones, or two big cyclones at least since then, and quite a few wet seasons, obviously. So we don't know what to expect. We know it's gonna be one heck of an adventure and something tells me it could even be one of those trips I remember for just about ever. I can't wait. We're starting our trip just north of Lakeland, approximately three hours north of Cairns. From here, we are pushing out and across towards the Kreb track, which we hope to cross at some point. All going to plan, we will then take a track that runs parallel to the Kreb, finally reaching the Roaring Meg waterfall. I'm going to do a little creek crossing and um, it looks like the track just continues. From what PJ was saying, that the track sort of goes from this sort of standard to a bit of a go track to almost nothing at all. So, mate, um, yeah, let's see what we're in for. Ah, uh, we've got a little... It looks like the track has been washed away, maybe in the last wet season. I'm just going to pull up here and jump out. It's, um, when I say it's been washed away, I mean it's really gone. Ugh, have a go at this. Doesn't look... Doesn't look too bad. You just don't want to go in there. Oh, oh. No, this doesn't look great at all. You don't want to go in there. There is a log, though. I don't want to end up in the water. Look at that, you fall in there, it's... Wow, that, look at that. That's, that would be up here. The water, I'd be in water now. Yeah. We can do this. We might just need to spot each other through and just... I might just knock this lip off, maybe. Although I don't think even that'd be a problem. No, you just drive it. Just drive up top of that and over. When the 30 comes through, mate, there You'll probably be... knock that out of the way. <laughs> I mean, many obstacles left. Shauno's up first, and that's a good thing, because you can always rely on the Dirty 30 to make a track where no track exists. Go for it, mate. Oh, it's a little bit nerve-wracking, you see. If I go too far, I'm going to end up in a pond. <laughs> if I go too far the other way, I'm, um, I've got about a five metre drop. The driver's side drop-off is actually a lot steeper than it looks, and the water on that side is very deep. We get something wrong here and Sean rolls, it would be absolutely catastrophic, and that's why we're taking this so seriously. Mighty D-Max in. D-Max is in your hands, so I give up. <laughs> Don't say that. Pretty good. The control that the auto box and the D-Max gives me makes obstacles like this almost not a challenge. Yeah. Couple that with traction control, and I tell you what, this little rig makes me look good. Yes! Pete's all the way up from Toowoomba, where he runs the business Queensland Panel and Paint. You'll notice he's driving his truck. He calls it Bessie. And it's only two weeks old from having the rear chopped off and that smick little touring canopy put on. This truck is as tough as nails and Pete is keen to give it its first test run. Yeah. We'll be going off your guidance on this one, Shauno. Oh, no. Actually, it might help if I put it into full drive. That might be a bit of an issue. I almost think we bring him down over there. Yep. So he's on a really straight yep. line through here. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Dion from Scamper Campers knows his truck well, but he knows his camper trailers even better. He's got zero problem towing his camper trailer through this track. In fact, he's looking upon this as just one big testing ground. And I think he's going to be spot on. That's insane. That's cool. Justin's up from NQ crashing cans. Of course, we all know Justin and we all know his big GU patrol. I love it to pieces. However, it does have a fairly high centre of gravity. And that is why we've got all hands on deck here, keeping our eyes open, making sure that his wheel placement is perfect. Woo! Well, mate, we haven't even got to where the track begins. No. The hard bit starts. And already we're seeing like, Signs of you know erosion, wet seasons have taken their toll on this track. So no one's been through here. I can't imagine what it's like a bit further on. I think it's going to be. I, I almost predict like um, 
like Justin was saying, Stony Creek. I see Stony Creek go over again. It's yeah, just, yep. Hasn't been driven. It's not as overgrown as Stony Creek. It might get that way. I don't I know. I think so. Once we get over this mountain range and get into the rainforest, rainforest. I think it's going to be exactly like that. Can you bring a shovel? It. Yeah, I've got a shovel. Yeah. I didn't want to say it no. in front of everyone. I've, I've got, got a shovel. Too. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we wanted to use it. Oh, we'll use it, all right. All right, let's get yeah. out of here. All right, done. Let's go. This is an old airstrip used for mustering many years ago. Obviously, it hasn't been used for quite some time. I certainly wouldn't want to be landing an aeroplane here now. It's extremely rough, and quite a few trees have popped up where they never were before. For us, though, it's a good chance to make up some time before things get very, very tight. Long, straight sections of track like this, we shouldn't get used to them. You know what I like about these old things? Try and find a nail holding this place together. It's, it's not, all tie it's wire, all isn't tie it? Wire. It's all fancy. And all these wire. logs would have been sourced just around yeah. a 50 yeah. metre square radius. Sort of I thing. reckon when they put it up, she would have been plumb. But now. <laughs> <laughs> she's seen just, a few wet seasons, yeah, I reckon. She's ever so slightly off plumb. It's really but cool. More significant for us, though. There ain't no dudgeon. There's no way we're missing it. This is the cattle yards that we yeah, ended that nice track on. Exactly right. <laughs> Going's been pretty easy till now. Yeah, now it's lock it in and we head roughly over through there. This is um, where we really need to look at the maps, I suppose, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. start to pick a pretty good course, because if we get this bit wrong... Well, if you get the start wrong... wrong yeah, you're going to end up somewhere in the jungle. You really are. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you want to go to the VMS and have a look at it? I think so, I, I wouldn't that. mind. And I'll, I'll obviously make this as a waypoint, so if yeah, anything yeah. happens, we can come, come back. Come straight back to this, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. done. Cool. All right, you grab the VMS. Yep. I'll, um, I'm going to keep looking around here, to be honest with you. Yeah, some, check the shower out. It's cool. What, are you saying something? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to put a waypoint there for yeah, that? Yeah, that's us. As you can see, the track's actually marked on here, believe it or not. But for how it long? say, oh, fair way until it stops. <laughs> Abruptly at that river there. Oh, right it really there. does. And from then, I suppose, we have to cross the river and continue. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. where we sort of yep. just sort of play it by ear for, you, know, okay. you know. But it says here, approximate position, because this is not surveyed, this road. Pretty good up till there. Yeah, it's pretty good. But it's not surveyed, so it's, yep. it says yep. approximate. It's, right. it's been gazetted, yep. but not. So we'll whack a waypoint in there, so oh, if we need oh, to yeah. hightail it back. We can do so. At a waypoint right now. Suck it and see. At least the weather's terrible. Beautiful, isn't it? Isn't it? Done. So we're literally going to lose the track within oh, yeah. only that far, so not, not that far. <laughs> not much at all. No. Nah. We'll zoom out so it gets wider. Oh, <laughs> we'll yeah. lose the track in that far then. <laughs> all right, you jump back in. I'm going to yep. get where the boys They're coming. Cool. Okay. Let's make a move, eh? Let's do this, eh? Well, you get in first. I can't get past you. Yeah. looked on VMS and a few sat images. You can see there's a massive mountain range up to our left and the track sort of goes around that mountain range. This will be one of the hardest challenges so far because there's a creek and just dense jungle in front of us. This is, this is a track. It has to be a track. Oh, it's definitely a track. Sean, I reckon he's on one down there. I can't see it from here. What's got me a bit confused is that you can almost see <laughs> like, a, like a brick wall where the rainforest starts through there and I reckon without a track... You can see it crossing, can you? Yeah, definitely see a crossing through the creek here and it goes up on the other side. Just looks too convenient to me. It does. It look look like at each side, it's just thick. This is where I thought I saw wheel tracks and it led me right to here. Yeah, that's just looks like a road now. It does, and then it just closes in again with thick grass. The grass is growing all over the track. Yeah. And all I'm just looking for is what's new, sort of foliage and yep. what's old. Yep. Given the size of the rear end on the Dirty 30, I'm not going to have any trouble following it. And that's a good thing, because when stuff starts to get thick, you don't want to get left behind. Yeah, it's not too bad. A few vines came through the window, mate. We're not actually pushing through virgin country right here. This once was a track. And you can tell that via a few different features. First and foremost, of course, there is a clearing through the trees. You can see where trees have been cut down to form this track. If you saw what I'm seeing up in front, you think we've got rocks in our heads, but you can definitely see some sort of line. There's, yeah, I'm going nice and slow. There's a lot of logs and stuff down here. I don't want to get front through the radiator. Also, in sections, the track is a lot more compact, where vehicles have run over it numerous times during cattle mustering. In all, once you get your eye in, you can actually see where the old track was fairly easily. 
It's just a matter of looking for a few telltale signs. We don't want to be running through the night either, especially in this kind of country. So whilst it's reasonably early for us, we're going to call this camp for tonight, get a fire going and settle in. Sean is getting ready with his single swag that he's going to put on a stretcher bed. Really comfortable option. I've, of course, opted to jump under my awning just in case we get a bit of dew overnight. And Dion reckons he can have his camper trailer set up quicker than we can put our swags up. I've seen him do it before, so I know it's true. Even though it's a warm night up the Cape, there is no better way to cook than over coals. We've got a campfire roaring here. We've also got some ribs in the camp oven that we're gonna keep going for about an hour until they're nice and juicy. Shano's got some meatballs that we're gonna stick on the barbecue plate. And that is what we call a meat feast. We're keeping dinner real simple, as you can see, because of course, we're hitting the hay early tonight, hoping for an early morning start. We want to be on the track, if you can call it that, at first light tomorrow. We've got a massive day ahead and really want to try and cover some ground. Stick around because coming up in chapter two, things start to get a lot thicker and we get a taste for exactly what we're in for. straight up and we are directly into the thick stuff. The track is still fairly visible, but I think from here on in, we can expect to see a lot of trees down, a lot of trees growing over the track, and of course, a lot of erosion. Something tells me yesterday was nothing, and today is where it all starts. Yeah, a bit of a hill climb, boys. It looks pretty shaly too. Maybe just wait a fraction till I get up here, so I don't, in case I've got to come back. Come in, mate. Call us up. There's a big run on the right hand side too, is it? Didn't even need to answer that one. Yeah, it's definitely a big rut up the side, mate. Um, it's pretty full on. I'll, I'll try and drive out of this. That's a that's a heck of an angle. Yeah, spot me, Grant. I can't really see much. Coming up, mate. Coming up. Hang on. Yeah, I just. Can you out, well, I think so too. I might go a little bit of front locker. Yeah. Yeah. Never feel like you can't ask for a spot. Especially when you're in country like this where help is so far away. A oh, little bit of locker, a little bit of locker. No rut too big. I'm going to straddle that, I think. I think so. <laughs> I just wondering about which side you're going to straddle on. Green ant. Yes. Up through the guts of it. I think I'll try and stand on the outside of that. Not that it matters, Pete. I reckon Bessie can handle just about anything. Yeah, mate, my straddle that plan went out the window. I dropped in. Dion's up next, and of course, towing the camper trailer. This might be a little bit more difficult. However, he's got a secret weapon in the 79 series and that big stonking V8. Something tells me it doesn't care that it's towing a camper trailer. Just listen to that. He's going to try and reverse back a bit and give that another go. Nice one, Dion, mate. It's all about choosing the right line, and you did exactly that. Justin's up in the GU. All he's really got to do here, after we've all been through, is follow our wheel tracks. Although, I reckon that GU just sounds a bit strange. 
anyway. He's made it look easy, and we're continuing on through the big stuff. That is a big log. That's a really big log. Now would be a good time to mention that we've got an old mate of mine, PJ, riding along to give us a bit of a hand when it comes to track finding. However, he's also a gun on the chainsaw. And before we could say anything, he was out and soaring through this log across our path. Good on you, PJ. Thanks for the help, mate. Despite having to clear our way constantly, there were sections of track where you could definitely see where people had been through here before us many, many years ago. Logs that were down with visible chainsaw marks through them were a clear indication that we were definitely on the right track. And that was a good peace of mind. thick is this vegetation. I wouldn't mind having a chainsaw mounted on either side of the truck, maybe one at the front as well, like sort of Mad Max style. You can just drive through here nice and slow. Some well, of the risks of driving through this sort of bushland, Graham luckily got out of the vehicle, noticed fuel going everywhere. He thought he'd hit the fuel tank quite hard, something has obviously hit under the undercarriage. He's actually ripped one of the fuel lines off. Oh, come That's on the why it's a great idea to get out and regularly check your vehicle. No, 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 no. Had I not noticed that, I slowly would have lost a full tank of diesel and I would have been out of the game. All it took was a quick fix to clamp the hose back on. What I noticed whilst I was under there, however, was that the cable holding the hose out of the way had broken. All that took, of course, was a quick cable tie and I'm back in action and that will not happen again. You can really tell we're getting into rainforest country. I mean, vegetation's just so thick through here. It's, there's vines, it's, you know, there's a lot more wildlife as well, birds and all sorts of stuff. Now, on this side of the range where it becomes rainforest and such, is the headwaters for a fish I've always wanted to catch, the jungle perch. And we're speaking to PJ, he reckons you get them down here. The problem is, he says, that they're just a bit too big. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, this is a bit of a kick in the guts. Last night in camp, Justin decided he'd have a bit of a look at his engine because he had a bit of a knocking noise. It leaves tap it or something, mate? Yep. Loose tap it, so I thought he'd just get in there and have a look at it last night. It seemed to be okay, put it all back together again, and we've only driven, well, not far at all this morning, and we've noticed that we're leaking a bit of oil down there. When I say a bit, it's quite a bit of oil. What's oil? Pete, of course, runs diesel. He knows exactly what's going on there Cut with diesel here. mechanics, etc., etc. Yeah, like so the that. boys are going to have a look at it now, yeah, see if they can't figure out what it is. But that means, of course, intercooler off, head back off, having a look inside the guts of it again and seeing if they can't figure out where that leak's coming from. But my suggestion was just put a bit of blue tack underneath. I didn't think that'd work. I don't understand these people. What's the matter with them? I don't know why people listen to Graham, I really don't. <laughs> the positive side to this fix was that the oil leak was coming from a slight kink in the head gasket. The boys managed to fix that up. The negative is that the tapping sound is still there. Justin's plan from here, of course, well, he doesn't really have much choice but to push on slowly, taking it as easy as he can. Done and dusted. This is a massive erosion gully, obviously caused by wet season rainfall rushing through here. Now, PJ came through here several years ago and this is as far as he got. He reckons the water was coming through so fast you couldn't stand up in it and it was nearly chest deep. The difference between the wet and the dry up here is sensational. For us though, it just means careful wheel placement and really, it's not much of an obstacle at all. Lockers, eh? I call them magic buttons. You get into trouble, you push your magic button and you drive out of trouble. And have a look at that trailer. It just goes exactly where the big 79 wants it to go. Murphy's Law states that nothing ever happens in a good spot. However, we have got very, very lucky here. Shawno's found a bit of a problem right as we cross a dry creek bed. The only bit of open ground we've found for hours. Now, what exactly is the problem, Shawno? This is driving down a pretty flat sort of station road and the steering just came away from the 30 and it's happened before, once on the beach down in Tassie, where it's just basically unthreaded from one of the ball joints and um, one of the tie rod ends anyway, just lost steering. So hopefully it hasn't pulled the thread completely out and I can get that nut back on. That's... Look, what we're doing here is we're going to try and weld the steering arm up because the, the nut has completely come through and the thread is all buggered inside the steering arm. So our only option is to try and weld it up. 
failing that, of course, we use a couple of ratchet straps and at least limp out to the road. What day is it today? Friday. I wonder if the battery would do a better job. Ray, you had that. All right, so I'm going to do a bit of a mercy dash back, well, to the nearest, I guess the nearest phone reception I can find. So I'm just going to get out of here and turn left, head south, and see what I can get. And as soon as I get some sort of internet search, I'm going to try and see if I can't ring Cooktown or maybe even back to Mariba, see if I can't pick up steering arm for Shawno, bring him back out again. So, mercy dash, I'm off, I'm out of here. All right, back side. So for those people that don't know what's actually happening here, the steering arm, of course, holds your two tyres together so they point nice and straight down the road. You lose that and your wheels, they can just do whatever they want. So you need, really need them to stay together. So what we've done is just put a ratchet strap around both um, steering up, like around the steering arm, around the two tie rods, and really tied that in nice and straight. It, 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 I've done it before, um, out in the outback before, and it's worked an absolute treat. So this would definitely get me down to the road. It won't be pretty, like I said. The alignment might be slightly out. I'll get there. Shono's back on the track, and that's some pretty good bush mechanics right there. However, he's going to have to be more careful than ever, especially when it comes to these crossed up rutted sections where if he picks up a wheel and that weld comes loose, well, we're back to square one, no steering and wheels pointing in the opposite directions. That's two in limp mode. Both Justin and Sean have now got mechanical issues and they've really got to start watching how they drive. I think at this time of the day, we should try and find a campsite, settle down, see if we can't nut out these issues and just exactly what we're gonna to do tomorrow. Oh, street in here. Pick your line through here. <laughs> These IFS four-wheel drives, like the Mighty D Max here, have a lot more clearance up the front end and solid axle four-wheel drives. Now, of course, that can really benefit you, especially when it comes to picking lines. This is, of course, because you might be able to pick a line in the IFS vehicle where you're not going to get hung up on your front diff, whereas a solid axle vehicle might get hung up. And as such, that line might be the safest line for your IFS four-wheel drive. Before we could even think about finding a clearing in which to camp, we're back into the thick stuff, and that means out with the chainsaws and clearing the track. PJ and his good mate CJ have both bought chainsaws along with them, that's two. Justin's bought one and so has Pete, equaling four. We're rotating through these and sharpening one at a time, handing it back and continuing. I'm on continual chainsaw duty, walking ahead of the trucks, trying to clear a path as we go. This is hard yakka, but if we can get this track through here, we'll be the first people to have done so in several years. The reward is worth the effort. After several hours on the chainsaws, we finally managed to find our way back onto what looks to be the old track. And right here was an old mining camp, or so says PJ. And you can see that because it's quite flat, open, and it has been cleared. There's a lot of chainsaw work from many years ago. It's perfect for us. The big issue we've got though, is the track does continue, but it's been washed away and is a massive ravine. It looks to be something of a showstopper, but that's for tomorrow. Not gonna worry about that right now. In fact, right now we're gonna set up camp and it's up to Sean Owen and Justin tonight to put on a feed for the boys. Get into it, lads. Tonight cooking up something really simple. It's roast drumsticks, the Moroccan spice, a bit of lemon, and all things nice, oh, mate. Nice. We're gonna do a few potatoes, maybe. It's a camp oven meal. So we've got three camp ovens, a fair few blokes, and it's a real simple meal. That's what I like so much about this. My mum actually taught it to me. It's really, oh. really easy, so. You, you reckon you can do as good a job as your mum? Never, mate, never could I do that good a job. You wanna start with getting me the chicken out. Chicken, I can do that for out. you. One of the things I wanna do with the chicken is I wanna brown the chicken off first, but before I even get to that stage, a little bit of flour, then I'll put the spices in here. I'm gonna shake the chicken drumsticks up inside the Ziploc bag, and then I'm gonna put them straight onto the heat, brown them off, and it'll be good to go, I reckon. That's it. All right, so I'm gonna set this up first before I get that heat going on the oil. So it's a fair bit. Moroccan seasoning, and I'm gonna put a fair bit in here. Put a bit of salt and pepper in here too. I think we need a beer to go with this, this mate, Moroccan seasoning. you just read my mind. How are you finding the new jewel zone, mate? Oh, mate. What a fridge, unbelievable. So jewel, jewel zone, jewel door. Obviously you can set that up as like fridge freezer. You, yep, I've got it set up now, I've got fridge's side. Hey, hey, well look at this guy, straight know, in. He's, he's, what got a, he's got an ear for these sort of things. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. All right, so I've shaken that up. I'm gonna chuck a couple I'll in chuck there, some, mate. excuse the fingers. This is like, I wanna sort of set this up right, so I'm gonna get this on the heat now. Bit of olive oil in the pan. I'm gonna chuck those straight in. 
one of the things I'm doing here, I'm just browning the chicken. I'm not actually cooking the chicken. The chicken's then going to be transferred into another camp oven. The camp oven's going to go on the coals. It's probably going to take about an hour to cook all up. I think, I think while you're doing that, I might start chopping some veggies up, yeah, get the other camp there. oven up and get it going. A bunch of lemons. Well, you've got the knife out. Yep. Just cut them straight in half. Straight in half. What I want to do with the lemons, I want to squeeze the juice inside the camp ovens, get that lemon juice in the chicken. Lemon chicken goes really good, I've been told. Put the lids on those, straight on the campfire. Yeah, I'm going to... Lemon herbs and spices in here, mate. Watch this. Yeah, right. This is your specialty, isn't it? A little bit of this. What's that? Garlic salt. A bit of garlic salt for oh. roast vegetable seasoning. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? A bit of pepper. Now, we need a bit of salt as well. We've got garlic salt. That'd be right. Now, these. That's what you use. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. No. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. having chicken tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that. Look at that, mate. Mm -hmm. you've, you've done a top job, mate. But I'm going to one-up you. I'm sorry to do this. Oh, OK. All right. So, you know, one thing you can't have enough of when you're cooking chicken is a lot of juice because you want to keep that moisture in the chicken. So, a bit of 4X gold. Okay, right yeah, you, right you win. All right, now I'm just going to put the lids on the camp oven. You're done? Yeah, I'm done. Let's go. Lid up straight on the campfire. This is going to be good, mate. I can tell. I can taste it already. It's been on the campfire for about, oh, what, an hour? An hour and a little bit. About an hour and 15. I reckon that that is done. Those veggies have really done well. Look at those ones, mate. Those are good. Oh, oh. Oof, look at that. That is about perfect. You hungry? Yep. Oh, this looks darn fine. How many of these can we have each? Like 19? Yeah, there's, yeah, a, fair, there's a fair bit. Well, there you go, guys. We've got lemon Moroccan spice chicken done in the camp oven with a bit of roast veggies. Doesn't get much better, if you ask me. This is really good. Mm. Restaurant quality, mate. Well, mate. Wow, that's a big call. <laughs> they do call me a gourmet chef, after all. <laughs> no, they never say that. <laughs> if you've just stood up, well, sit back down again, because coming up in Chapter 3, just when all seems lost, we get a glimmer of hope. Early morning, I noticed Sean O heading out of camp looking for that track to the south, and of course, he never goes far without a fishing rod in his hand. Good luck to him. I'm going to head north and see if I can't find a way around this erosion gully that we spotted last night when we got into camp. I'm down in the Calligan River. It's one of the tributaries to the Dane Tree and a beautiful little river, might I add, as well. I've come down here for a bit of a fish, but also to find maybe a track across this river. Um, if the boys don't have any luck trying to find a track over the other side, maybe we can find there's an old track apparently that runs through here. Um, I got up really early before the boys even woke up, took my rod, just so they wouldn't see that. There's heaps of JPs in here and sooties as well, so absolutely amazing place. Look at that. That is a beautiful little fish. Not huge, super aggressive, and just a real Australian icon if you ask me. Always wanted to do this. I'm gonna let him go. just so thick here trying to find anything much less a track that was driven last 15 years ago well you're it's almost impossible but you can if you look through the bush see where there's old trees big thick ones and new trees which are only small and we're kind of aiming for those new trees so I'm just waiting on Sean O'Neill now there he is now moving so looks like he might have found something we'll follow this up and see how we go as luck would have it Sean O found not only a few small jungle perch but he's also found the remnants of that old track now it doesn't look fantastic in fact it's far more overgrown than the track that we've come in on but we've come this yeah. far, we ain't turning back just yet. So it's out with the chainsaws and back into it. I reckon this is probably the, like, the first water crossing you'd be able to drive without getting wet in a long time. We've spent a fair bit of time on the chainsaws through here and cleared it as much as we possibly can. However, there is still the very real danger of staking tyres because we're turning left across a water crossing, across sections that have been cut with chainsaws. And so everybody is on guard to try and do no panel damage and zero tyre damage. Well, right, boys, I'm going for it. bit sticking out there we had to be a bit cautious of. I think we should be alright there. Gosh, I love the control that an auto gives you. So good.
Dion's got quite the challenge in front of him here. He's got to turn hard left. And the turning circle on the 79 is, well, non-existent. And that means that camper trailer is going to come in on quite a tight angle. I'm going to keep a close eye on his passenger side so that Dion can watch his driver's side. And I reckon between the two of us, we've got this. Go back. Okay, give it a go from there. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Mate, you've just picked up a great big log here. It's actually helped you out because it's lifted your trailer up a bit. Yeah, gun it. A bit of spotting, a bit of chainsaws, and a bit of V8 grunt. Got him out of there with zero damage. That's exactly what we want. Justin's up last. He's seen the lines we've taken and we've done most of the clearing. This should be a walk in the park. I don't think there's a better sounding truck than a Turbo TD42 Patrol. Hang about. <laughs> Except perhaps a V879 series. That's some good sounding music right there. Yeah boys, just another little um, creek crossing down the bottom here. It doesn't look too deep. It might be a little muddy. <laughs> Famous last words, all right. That was, um, yeah, just, just the whole nose went straight down into that one. Alright, I'm going to We've hit a ridiculously steep and rutted section of track right here. I'm well ahead. We got a call from Dion saying that he's come around a switchback and had some dramas with the trailer. What you can't see here is that on the passenger side, there's an extremely steep edge that drops off pretty much endlessly. Anywhere further over, and he's gonna roll down that hill. Doesn't look so bad right now, but trust me, if this goes wrong, it goes horribly wrong. So it's all hands on deck. We've got the camera crew out. Shauno's run back up to give him a hand and it's everybody helping to put Dion back on all four wheels. Yeah, mate, it's all going well. I think we're just um, going to use a camera car to pull this thing down and um, we shouldn't be too long. This is actually quite a complex recovery and we've got two winches involved, one pulling him back down the hill and the other keeping him level. You can see the camera car there has been pushed up into the bush just to keep that passenger side rear from lifting up too far and tipping him over. This really is a combined effort. One winch is coming out, one winch is going in. A lot of teamwork and a lot of communication. A little bit of winch work and a little bit of all eyes on. And Dion's looking like he's in a much better position right now. There you go, that was a crisis averted. You know, we really took our time, thought about, you know, every single element. We had three or four different ideas, really sat down and thought about it before we actually put one into motion. The one we did choose was the right one and it made it look quite easy in the end. So we're not done yet though, that's the only thing. So we've got a vehicle in front, vehicle behind and um, we should make this down in one piece, hopefully. <laughs> Come on down when you can, mate. Just um, probably you, Graham, because there's not a lot of room down the bottom of this creek crossing to get too many vehicles, and it's quite a steep hill, hill behind me. So come on down, and then I'll um, try and go through. Right, mate. Heading down now. After all that work, we finally made it into familiar territory. You see, we've come across the Kreb track, and this river crossing runs parallel. And I've been here before, several years ago, and not much has changed. It's still fast flowing, crystal clear, deep, and super slippery. Let's get into it. There's a fair few rocks in here, just finding traction's a hard bit. This is actually quite a tricky river crossing. You've got to pick your line. To the right is some very deep holes, and to the left, some massive boulders. The camera car went through first, as it often does, and was stuck for 10 minutes, which included quite a bit of winching. Shauno's seen that line now, and hopefully he'll get through without any drama. Ah, yes, I see. The, car, the problem is I've got the sun shining down on me here, and I can't quite see where it's deep and where it's not. Mm -hmm. 
I've come in too much to the right here and picked a slightly wrong line. So I'm just going to go back and try again and get me out of these deeper holes. Of course, the real problem I've got is that it's so slippery. This is where traction control is going to come in and save my bacon. Go back a bit, mate, if you can. Keep going, yeah, you got it. No, yep. Nice drive, mate. That was uh, not an easy feat. Pete's up next. He's got clearance and 35s, plus he's seen the line watching from the opposite bank. Something tells me he's going to drive directly through this. Go for it, buddy. Go. Also helping him is that rear chop. You see, that's giving him a massive departure angle. He's not going to get hung up on any rocks coming through here at all. Bessie was built for this kind of thing. He's going to enjoy every minute of it. Just watch out for your pumpkin there, mate. You don't want to be doing any diff damage. Sort of wide towards that tree in the river crossing. It's a little bit deep as you plummet in and then just follow it around sort of close to the waterfall. Some big rocks there. Nice drive, mate. We'd been seeing quite a bit of smoke as we were doing that river crossing and had ash falling down on us for quite some time. Boys, it looks like we're driving straight into that fire from here. What's it look like, mate? There's a bit of back burning going and on. The reason now becomes obvious. A few of the locals have been doing some back burning on their side of the road. The way in which they do this is precise, and it gets done about this time every year. It's very common in this part of the world. Back burning like this not only greatly reduces fuel load, but also nourishes the soil and promotes good growth the year after. A lot of the plants up here also really need this forest fire in order to germinate. This is a way of life for the Australian bush and it's been done like this for as long as Australia's been around. Alright boys, we've got a fair bit of mud up in front. I'm just going to sort of glide my way through it hopefully. here on the right. I might just um, try and crawl up here. Hang on. Yeah, it's a little bit rubbery, but not too bad. There is a line through here. I just can't quite get out of this last bit, mate. I might just do a solo winch up here, eh? There's a real fine line when it comes to driving these remote tracks out here, and it's knowing how far you can push things. Yeah. For me, I like to try and err on the side of caution out here. I always like to put the dampener in the heaviest bit of equipment in a recovery situation. Heaviest bit when you're using this sort of Dyneema rope here, of course, is the hook. So I'm going to put that on. Mate, as soon as I jump out of the way, you're free to start winching. Something breaks and I'm really in deep water. We're a long way from help and a tow would be slow and painful and would mean the end of the trip for me and the person doing the towing. I came to a point here where I could have pushed a lot harder, but I knew that if I broke anything, that would be the end. So it was out with the winch and that's why we put a winch on the front of our four wheel drives. Don't be afraid to use them. That's exactly what you paid your money for.
Pete's big GU's got more flex than a sick giraffe. We'll combine that with the magic buttons, plus that turbo TD42, he's made that look like child's play. Dion's up next, and of course the big V8. The torque that that thing's got, it's not even going to notice. There's a hill there. He's picked a good line to start with, and you can really see the pulling power. I reckon Dion half the time forgets he's even got a trailer on the back. Speaking of which, that trailer just does exactly as it's told. We've done no damage to that, and it's gone absolutely everywhere the trucks in front have. Look at that, tough as old leather. Too easy. All right, boys, according to the VMS, this should be the Roaring Meg waterfall. Right, mate, what do you say we jump out and have a look? Reaching your goal is always a good feeling, and when that goal is the Roaring Meg Waterfalls, well, it's all the more sweet. This is an iconic part of the Kreb track, and if you're ever down this way, I urge you to stop in, even camp the night, and have a look. It's a place you won't forget. And for us, this is the end of what's been an absolutely epic journey, helping CJ and PJ push open that track that hasn't been driven in the last 15 years means that now we can link that side of the Kreb to the Roaring Meg Waterfall, and hopefully it can be enjoyed by four-wheel drivers for some time to come. The Roaring Meg Falls themselves are actually a sacred site for the Indigenous people out this way, and so out of respect, we have not filmed them. That means you're going to have to get here and see them for yourself. Trust me, it's worth it. Mate, you'd be just about twitching right now, wouldn't you? Oh, I wish I could have a cast in there. All these little pools in here would be full of jungle perch. Look, this has been an amazing trip, but for me, what's really, I don't know, caught my attention is that the Kreb track's running along here. The rest of the Cape is up there, and we've seen people coming south from Cape York up the top there. Apparently, it's a traffic jam. Absolutely packed. You know, this time of year, school holidays, but this part of Cape York, people just somehow just fly past it right yep. up to the tip. Yep. But it, seriously, guys, get down and experience the southern part of Cape York because it's Rainforest, absolutely beautiful. It is right. stunning, it's untouched. There's no one in the campsites up here. You can have the whole place to yourself. The beach down here you can swim in today, all alone with no one else. Try and do that at Fruit Bat Falls today. No, it'd be absolutely packed. Chaos. Folks, get out and explore those tracks you don't get told about, like the power line track we've just done. And maybe, if it gets opened up, the track that we just put through with PJ and CJ. Absolutely insane. I'm going to try and get us out of here now so that I can catch JP. Mate, we don't have that much time left in the day. So I've got this, I've got this. <laughs> We'll see you next time on... Four-wheel drive I'm not action. wearing my shirt. I lost my no, shirt. No, I do. Four-wheel <laughs> drive action. See you guys.